the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also
arranging from the problem as well. The people who walk to darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of peace, darkness, and then the light has shined. You have much light and nature. You have increased joy. They rejoice before you as you enjoy at the harvest. As people exalt, as people exalt, when writing, for the yoke of their burden and the car across their shoulders, the road of their oppressor, they are broken as on the day of the painting. For all the books of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For the child has been born for us, the son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and his name is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. His authority shall grow and marry, and there shall be and there is peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it, justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The seal of the Lord was the this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This night that we were are fulfilled in our hearing and in our ways, for the promise of God has come to us. So we light the candle at the center of our reef and our faith. We light it in the name of the one who is the light. And as Mary did so long ago, we name this light Jesus.
bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-contained, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, for a zealous for good deeds. Here with the Spirit of the same to the church. with peace, and found Mary and Joseph and the child 
lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of Christ. is inexpressibly 
intolerable. God comes into the world as a helpless infant, someone who will need the care of others to survive. Not only that, he is part of an oppressed and subjugated people, their lives controlled and regulated by the machinery of empire, just as millions of people around the world today are controlled and regulated. Sometimes they are driven from their homes and their lands by forces beyond their control, just as in Matthew's Gospel, the Holy Family was compelled to seek refuge in another country after his birth because of another tyrant's paranoid him. At his birth, the only shelter Jesus is given is outside the warmth and light of ordinary hospitality. Think about the families in our city without secure shelter, the people living in encampments and on the street, or those who are compelled to flee danger and oppression in their homelands without knowing what lies in them. Jesus' first worshippers are shepherds, the lowest of the low in the first century Palestine. Luke prepares us for the very beginning of his story, for the otherness of Jesus. Prepares us to see him walking among and alongside the oppressed and the excluded, with those whose lives are dominated by others, who are deprived of the usual comforts of society, and who are despised because of their origin, their work, or the diseases that afflict them. When we look for the face of Christ today, that is where we need to turn for our lives. We will find the incarnate word in the lives of the powerless, the hungry, the homeless, the vulnerable, and the despised, in exactly the places which cry out for our care. If you've been listening to CBC in the last few days, you may have heard the Palestinian theologian Dmitri Rachel comparing the story of the children of Gaza to that of the Holy Family. The pregnant woman forced to find a place, an insecure and inhospitable place, to give birth to her child. The deaths of hundreds, if not thousands, of children. The families forced to flee in search of safety. By God's grace and mercy, our salvation does not depend on our diligently to respond to all of these calls on us, but we must recognize that our redemption is bound up in the heartbreaking vulnerability of Christ as well as in the awesome power of God. Confronted with this vulnerability, we can easily be overwhelmed. How can we serve? How can we best show our love and what does Christ need from us? Luke's emphasis on Jesus as an infant sets the stage for these questions very effectively. The logos, the word which shaped creation, now comes into our world, into our lives, as an inarticulate and dependent baby. The great silence which will come upon Jesus on the cross is foreshadowed, in a way, in the tiny infant's inability to communicate his needs and his pains. Parents, especially first-time parents, know this reality only too well. Worn out by trying to work out what their baby's noisy sobbing is about and how to quiet it, they nevertheless know that this is their responsibility the responsibility of relationship and of love. And they go about it by guessing, by learning, by doing their best in the face of confusion and frustration and exhaustion because they know they have to. When we look at the world which God has given us to care for, we can often feel just like that. Where do we even start? 
What is life like the world? There is the greatest need. And sometimes at our lowest end, what is this my responsibility? We learn strategies, we develop networks and institutions and codes of practice. But when we do feel helpless, we can remember Mary and Joseph tending to their child in love the best way they knew how and find strength in their story. Tending to each other's needs is not the price God demands for our salvation or some kind of punishment. And God's redeeming love is not dependent on our success in carrying out this task, restricted as we are by our own brokenness, but rather boundless and boundlessly forgiving by calling us to care for each other and for the vulnerable Christ in one another. God is not setting us a series of tests, but rather offering us a share in the life of mutual love and interrelationship, which is the divine nature, the mutual indwelling of the persons of the Trinity. In Jesus, Jesus, we see the self-emptying nature of his life, submitting to the helplessness of the flesh in order to redeem it, submitting to the shamefulness and precariousness of a life unfolding in time so as to draw our lives, all our lives, into the glory of eternity. Unto us, the child of people, Emmanuel, God made us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
daughter from being joyful. May we grow up in him who unites our lives to yours. For he is Lord, now and forever. Amen. This 
Creator of all. Tonight you have united earth and heaven by sending your Son to take our human nature. May we who have tasted heavenly things share in the light of his eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us and do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never overcome. Oh, 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 
May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God only, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 